Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Workshop. It's fantastic to have you here. As you know, we recently passed a million subscribers, which is very exciting. I am wearing the celebratory million subscriber t-shirt available now at the website alexsteelshop.com. And today, we are gonna be starting the process of making a falchion. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy. Now is also a good time to introduce new intern, Alex, all the way from the Netherlands. Yeah. It's great having you here. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Alex is already a little bit of a knife maker himself. He's also a scientist, which is cool, and you've got an awesome beard. Thank you so much. Well, that's my pleasure. <laughs> I've already had Alex do some research on the falchion. Can you run us through the basics, what we need to know about the weapon? Yeah, so basically, a falchion was a 13th century Greek hunting weapon. And after that, throughout the 16th and 17th century, it spread out throughout Europe because it was a very versatile weapon. It was light, it is sharp, so the basic applications were hunting and meant as a secondary cavalry sword. It's meant to be used from horseback, slashing people through. Okay, well that's good. Yeah. Slashing weapon. Slashing weapon, no stabbing. You can see in a minute that the point is really nice, has a nice curve. It's not acute, it's meant for slashing, not any type of stabbing, just finishing off either an animal or an opponent. Great. Now the falchion that I was most excited by was the falchion of this style from the Cluny Museum in France. I really like the look of it. And it also looks just like one that I saw at Owen Bush's forge in. I think, okay, that's, a, that's the type of thing that we wanna make. So I've had Alex sketch out here on some graph paper a rough little idea for the falchion, about 60 centimeters long, about eight centimeters wide. So we've got something to work off of, but based on that Clooney falchion, I think there are a few tweaks that we need to make. The blade width looks good, but I think it could be a little narrower back here and we need to put a fuller in. It looks like there's a little bit of a recurve in it. So I think we erase this line and we'll draw across here. The very slightest little recurve here. Oh, that looks cool as that bellies out into the very belly of the blade, comes up towards that nice slashing tip. The handle can be quite small. We'll sort out the rest of this area afterwards. The key is the blade side, which you pretty much got. Take some measurements. Since you're Dutch, we'll work from uh, metric. There's also a fuller that goes about three quarters of the way up, like so. And we're also pretty interested in trying to do a hamon for the first time here in the workshop. Alex has done some in the past on some of his small projects, so that would be a really nice feature to do that and be able to do that, but this is the only steel that I have that would be suitable for it. This is some 1095, so obviously this wouldn't usually want to be a sword steel, but with a hamon, which is creating a very much a different structure in the blade because you have unhardened material and hardened material, it would probably make it fine. The downside is this is only two inches by five sixteenths of an inch thick or so. It's about 50 mil by eight or nine or 10 mil. Not a lot of material to work with. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cheap piece of mild steel. It's in the fire. We're gonna use it as a test piece to see if we can pull and stretch that material out into that wide eight millimeter, three and a half inch wide blade. Uh-oh. Ah! I think we can make it happen. That is about plenty wide enough. I think it's gonna work. What I didn't like was having to hold the piece in these tongs though. They're not suited for flat bar like that. They're not built for it. So the first thing that I do after I cut off a piece of 1095 for this is we are gonna weld on a handle to it. Just like we do when we make our Damascus. And then it's on to forging the point and then the rest of the blade. Okay, 
so we have a rough preform in it. We have a slight point that's going to the middle, so it'll come back up to the top. We have a reverse taper coming down. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and increase our width. In the power hammer, we've got fullering dies. They're rounded and much like when you're rolling go, you roll it in the direction you want it to go. These are gonna be spreading the material out, hopefully increasing the width just as much as on the test feed. So we are pretty close indeed. We got the kind of length that we need. We are just seriously close on the width that we need, which is good. Overall profile is there. Now what we need to do is flip it around. We need to begin forging the tang, but we got to make sure that we forge the tang at the exact length, so the exact distance down. And then we need to make sure that it's straight to the blade and in the middle of the blade, just how we want it. So I'm going to hack off with a hot cut and then we're gonna go back into the power hammer, forge down that tang section. So we have just done a subcritical, wow, we've quenched it because we're gonna do a subcritical anneal, otherwise known as a spheridizing step thing, but what's it? Something like that. So it is forged, it has been quenched, and what we are then gonna be doing is we're then gonna be bringing up the temperature just a little bit, 600 degrees, about 1200 something Fahrenheit, that will be our spheridizing process done, our subcritical anneal, which is gonna do some things to the fancy, fancy, fancy stuff that goes on inside the metal, which someday I'll be smart enough to tell you about. Come have a look at this. So it has been subcritical annealed, which would mean that it is now spreadly soft. And the trouble is, Captain Smarty Pants here over here, that's me, has made something that looks nothing like the drawing. Of course, when I was sketching this out this morning, I said, I'm gonna put a slight little recurve in here. And I guess my brain thought we were making a gigantic recurve. This thing looks like a bolo machete that is absolutely ridiculous. How did I let that happen? This drawing was right here. 
and I didn't just put the thing on and make it right. Silly. You see, this is the line that we're meant to follow and we are just completely missing the meat that we need in this entire mid third section. I knew it would be a struggle getting the width that we wanted, but we're close enough that, okay, plus or minus five millimeters at its widest. Yeah, we would have struggled to get the full width. Okay, wouldn't have been fine if it was five mil out. But you see right here in this big part of the blade, we're a full half inch, five eighths of an inch, 12 millimeters, 16 millimeters out of uh, where we need to be width wise. There is scope for making something falchion like out of what it is that we have, but yeah, it just kind of feels like that would be a little bit ridiculous. Uh, a, a little bit lackluster. So I think the answer is, is that we need to light the forge and we need to completely remake the blade out of the rest of that 1095 bar we have, which is right here. But I still think we can use this blade for something. I think it'll serve just perfect as some good grinding practice for Alex. What do you say, Alex? You want to give her a go? I think I can make something interesting out of this. I like the sound of that. And that also means that we could potentially use it as a little hormone practice too. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Very yeah. good idea. In case we, uh, we're unhappy with it. Yep. Absolutely, then we can kind of experiment with the hormone techniques and, yeah. and try and get the best line, the best contrast we can. This is very exciting because you don't have a grinder like this at home, do no, you? No, not at all. No, 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 no. What do you have? I have a small one by 30 inch little belt grinder. So, super, super underpowered? Super underpowered, you press your head and just shut down completely. Okay, yeah. takes like two hours to grind just the slightest yeah. little bit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, well hey, it goes to show you can get a lot done with like a $40 tool. So it's pretty impressive what you've done so far with that. It's also impressive because we had you do a little bit of a chef's knife grind yeah. on one of those test pieces. Let me show you guys. Having never used a nice powerful grinder like that, he took one of these mild steel integral chef's knife blanks I made, got a beautiful distal taper on it, beautiful grinds and it didn't take you long at all. So the practice that you've been getting with the one by 30 is clearly phenomenal. Yeah. So I think you, I, you know, I don't think you can have any trouble with the, uh, with the Fauci and it's just longer. And I don't know from my tiny little bit of experience making, making some of the longer swords that I've made. The trick is, is that you just keep staring down that edge as long as possible, trying to make sure that you keep grinding into straight. And uh, it's fun, but it's difficult. It is fun. It's a lot of fun. That, but the chef's knife was a lot of fun. It was about, what was it, 20 minutes? It I didn't think? take you long at all. Oh. I'm actually quite jealous. It took, <laughs> took me a lot longer to grind the chef's knife. I'm going to light the forge. <laughs> progress here, rough, chunky, but wide, which is good. Alex has just come out of the grinding room and holy moly, that is not so bad. That is beautiful. Very nice. I can tell that belt got uh, pretty worn, now yeah, it's so yeah. shiny. I was contemplating on removing all the bits of scale, but since we wanted to test the heat rate for the hormone, and it's already very, fairly thin, I wanted to discuss with you whether I would grind it through it or just, or just leave it. That's a great place. question since it is just a test piece. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that though it's just a test piece, we could probably make something pretty cool out of it anyway. Now, obviously preheat treat, are we that concerned about this? No, we can get that after a hardening step anyway. Yeah, for sure. And it's nice to leave it a little chunky before the hardening. That's pretty nice. It's a little wavy, 
We've got a little convex out here. But I'd say that's some damn nice grinding. Man, I think that's looking great. Killer job, Alex. Thanks, man. It's been another long one. We're gonna leave it there. I'm gonna get back to finishing off the forging of my piece on tomorrow's episode, so I hope you subscribe. Again, it is very exciting that we have just reached a million subscribers, and we have these fantastic t-shirts to celebrate it. One million up top, and Jamie has done a phenomenal job drawing out all of the tools, all of the knives, all of the swords that we have made to get here to a million. Forged is on the right sleeve. We've also got them in a premium shirt, sweatshirts, hoodies, mugs, all that fun stuff at the website alexealshop.com. I would be truly, truly grateful if you would go and grab yourself one of those products. It's a fabulous way to support all of this happening. Keep us making more wonderful projects. Thank you as ever. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. Bye-bye.